Church. Happy Father's Day. I don't care how late you stay out. Stay out as late as you want. You want to borrow the new car? You want to borrow my credit card? Kids today, they really have it rough. I have no idea where we are or where we're going. I mean, when I was their age, life was easy. Super easy. Why haven't you gotten a tattoo yet? How come you don't have any piercings yet? Yep, we're lost. We are completely lost. Ew, sports. It, it, just do whatever the mechanic says to do. Vehicle maintenance is completely overrated. Look, whatever the mechanic is asking, just pay him. Pay him whatever he wants. I wish they had soap operas at night. I like that boy. You should date him. You should date him immediately. Well, what about the creepy guy with the motorcycle? He's cute. Yeah, sure. Spring break in Tahiti sounds fun. Hey, make sure you get all your video games done before you start your homework. You don't have to pass all your classes. What? You have a project due tomorrow and you've known about it for four weeks and you haven't started yet? Sweet! Doesn't anybody want to know if we're there yet? Remember, if you need anything between midnight and 4 a.m., please come wake me up. Hey, I'm on the phone. Could you bring the baby over and let him climb all over me? Hey! Hey, can you please turn that music up? Well, we just stopped for lunch 10 minutes ago, but yeah, let's stop again. I never have trouble with my toddler. I never have trouble with my teenagers. I never have trouble with my adult children. You know, she's right. We are ruining her life. Yes, more homework to correct. All right, whining. Yay, tantrums. Mmm, vomit. We just really need to spoil these kids more. Sorry, buddy. I don't know any good jokes at all. You're 16. You pretty much know everything now. I think 18's a great age to get married. Okay, remember, make sure you turn on all the lights before you leave the house. Hey, could you leave the front door open for a couple hours? Thanks. Whoa, money really does grow on trees. You have to be very specific nowadays about going to stores. You need to be very concerned. One dad, since this is uh, Father's Day weekend, one dad was really nervous about going to the store. He hadn't been for a long time, and the family said, yeah, you go, you go do it, you do it this time. And they said, just, just wear a mask and wear gloves. Just a mask and gloves. He said, are you sure I'm not going to catch that disease if I go out there? I'm going to catch that virus. I, I, I'm sure it's going to happen. They said, no, just wear a mask and gloves. Well, he went to the store and he came back. He said, you lied. Everybody else is wearing clothes. <laughs> Speaking of other issues going on here in the world, racial tension. A driver, a truck driver, literally got arrested, not arrested, I'm sorry, fired from his job last week. He was cracking his knuckles. Someone videoed that and said he made some kind of uh, racial sign. Cracking his knuckles, and he got fired. There was a guy that worked for a calendar factory, and they fired him. And all he did was take one day off. Said, well, there were two fellas that stole a calendar, but don't worry about some big crime wave happening because they each got six months. You can share those dad jokes if you like. Well, let's look at Luke chapter 12, verses 22 to 34. And uh, the title of the message is Don't Worry. Not anything else, just don't worry. From the sins of greed and selfishness that Jesus had been teaching about, now he moves to the issue of worry. And actually, worry is connected to greed and selfishness. Someone has said that greed can never get enough. Worry is afraid that it may not 
have enough. Have you ever thought about this? Wealth can be as much a danger to those who do not have it as it is to those who have the wealth. And Jesus is pointing us to more important uh, things, uh, more attention to God's kingdom, less attachment to this world and the things of this world. In the previous verses of Luke chapter 12, Jesus talked to and about the people who had possessions and access to more. And he told the parable of a rich man who could not see beyond himself. All he talked about was I, me, my, myself, mine. And that rich man could not see beyond this world. His preparation was for the earthly life only. And he ignored the spiritual life that goes beyond earthly existence. And in the story, he was well prepared for many years of life. Yet... He only had hours to live. And now here in this part of Luke chapter 12, Jesus has a lesson for people who have few possessions. Luke 12 verses 22 down to 34. And let me read that passage of God's word for us. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature or his height? And if you then are not able to do the least of these things, why are your anxieties so high? Why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon, in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have, give alms, provide yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that do not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, verse 34 says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is not teaching people to be lazy, to be reckless. He's, he's telling us to do our very best, but leave the rest to God. We need to depend on God. Those first few verses, 22 down to 26, the focus is on the outcome of, of being rich toward God. We need to trust in God's provision. We need to serve in his kingdom. Verse 24 has a couple of negatives. And the assumption is that while birds don't work at a job, people do. Birds don't farm. That's what he's talking about there, the, the, the toiling, the working like on a farm. Yes, they do put out effort to eat, but they eat what they did not plant, they eat what they did not cultivate, what they do, uh, do not harvest. They do not pay for their food, yet they eat. We're expected to work. Verse 25, a little controversy and question about whether it's talking about getting taller or living a longer life. But uh, the question really is, can you get taller by worrying? Will worry help you live longer? Whichever way that's to be interpreted, will worry help you do either of those? Get taller or to live longer? Not at all. 
Now I agree with worry you might get bigger around eating because you're uh, worrying and uh, that's a whole different issue. But you're not going to get taller. You're not going to get live longer because you worry. The point here is that Jesus is telling his disciples, you do not grow spiritually when you're worrying. Verse 27, he talks about uh, lilies, and they're probably not actual lilies like we might think of today. The lilies that, that uh, Jesus mentioned actually are scarlet anemones. And after a summer rain, which did not happen very often, an entire mountainside would be covered with these beautiful scarlet flowers. Beautiful blooms. And those flowers died the next day. They lasted one day. Many of those flowers were never seen by the human eye. And yet God clothed that mountain in beauty. He did that. He created them. The point is that beauty in this world, whatever kind it is, is temporary. In verse 28, he talks about grass. Now, wood was very scarce in that Palestinian area, that region of the world. People would use dry grass and wild flowers to fuel their ovens. They would burn that in their, in their ovens so that they could cook things. So that grass, the wildflowers, they're, they're burned up. And in fact, gone very quickly. They served a purpose, yes, but the grass and wildflowers were temporary. God cared enough to make that grass grow to, and uh, create those beautiful flowers, all temporary. So the question is, don't you think he cares about you? He cares about things like that. Now, Jesus has talked about birds, he's talked about flowers, he's talked about grass as all his illustrations. And all of those things have less value than a human life, a human soul. And Jesus is arguing from less to more. He's asking, well, how much more will God do for you if he does that for the least of things? Well, the answer is a lot. A lot. But the problem is we get stuck on the less. And he talks about here less faith. Since Jesus is talking uh, directly to his disciples, uh, some of them must have been showing some anxiety. There must have been some worry among the disciples. And Jesus is speaking directly to them and teaching them, wanting to encourage them. We need more encouragement here in this world today, and I really think that's what Jesus is doing. He's not just getting on to them. He's telling them how great uh, God is and how great God wants to do things in their lives and for them, and they can be used in his kingdom. Jesus is telling them that anxiety is needless. Verse 30 He's teaching here that the secular world, it only worries about sustaining life. They're only thinking about the right now and uh, the immediate future. But God has that covered. We can depend on the Lord for those things. Verse 31, there is a greater priority. Verse 31 says, seek the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. And this is a very positive command of seeking the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God. I'll agree with you. Life is insecure. There's no guarantee of financial security. There is no guarantee of good health. Just uh, a week ago, one of my uh, dear cousins who has leukemia, lost her husband. He just died in the middle of the night. We have no guarantee either of health or anyone else's life or of our, our loved ones. Uh, the uncertainty of life, though, Jesus says, is not a reason to worry. Let me say that again. The uncertainty of life is not a reason to worry. Our part 
our response here in this world. Love God, trust God, serve God. And then we will share the benefits of his kingdom in our own lives. And the kingdom of God on earth here is actually in the hearts and souls of God's people. His kingdom is God's people doing his will. And so much of people's lives are spent on things that just don't last. So much effort, so much energy is expended on that which cannot last. We need to work for the things that will last forever. Chuck Swindoll, a pastor in Texas, uh, wrote a little article about the things that last forever. I want to share just part of it because it's easier to just tell you, here's what he said about this. That's what I want to say about it. And the title of the little article says, what lasts forever? Only two things. Only two things. Uh, Pastor Swindoll says, do you realize there are only two eternal things on earth today? Only two, and it's people and God's word. Everything else will ultimately be burned up. Everything else. And it kind of sets your priorities different, doesn't, doesn't it? Uh, he says the stuff we put on the shelf, the things we put frames around, the trophies, the whatnots, we dust and shine and we love to display. Things we're so proud of. It's all headed for the bonfire. Peter tells us that in 2 Peter chapter 3. But not God's book and not God's people. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 6 to 8. A voice was saying, cry out. Another says, what should I cry out? This. All humanity is grass, and all its goodness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade when the breath of the Lord blows on them. Indeed, the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade away, but the word of God remains forever. That's a beautiful passage of scripture. Um, my kids used to sing a song that had those words there. Uh, grass withers, the flowers fade away, but the word of God remains forever. And we need to count on God's word. We need to learn from it, apply it to our lives. And Jesus uses that illustration. Uh, possibly he's thinking of Isaiah when he's teaching here. Grass grows, it withers. Flowers bloom, then they die. But God's written word, God's message, God's truth will abide forever. All his promises will be fulfilled. God's redemptive truth, him offering salvation to each one of us, cannot be changed. And he will accomplish what his powerful word proclaims. He will achieve the purpose for which his word was sent. Let me add one more passage of scripture to this article that Pastor Swindoll wrote. It's Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. For just as rain and snow fall from heaven and do not return there without saturating the earth and making it germinate and sprout and providing seed to sow, food to eat, so my word that comes from my mouth, this is the Lord speaking, so my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty. But it will accomplish what I please and will prosper in what I send it to do. God's word will work in your life. God's word is eternal. God's people are eternal. People last forever. His word will endure. We need to invest in people. We need to invest in the Bible. Now, in that Palestinian culture, Getting back to that passage of scripture, that Palestinian culture, wealth was often associated with costly clothing. Jesus said, don't worry about what you're, you're wearing and the style or things like that. But in that Palestinian area, they had a moth problem, a moth problem. And moths like to eat the fancy clothes and moths would ruin that expensive clothing. 
I say, how about putting on the garment of praise? That's from Isaiah 61, 3. Put on the garment of praise and the spirit of heaviness. Just let God's spirit work in your heart and life. Uh, perhaps you uh, should wear a coat of purity. Maybe a suit of goodness. Now, people like having, uh, you know, logos, uh, sometimes uh, maybe Nike, uh, fancy suits like Armani. Uh, now, when I was uh, uh, younger, I had a friend that uh, he kept talking about he bought his uh, suits at this fancy place called Jacques Penet. And I thought, wow, maybe if I have enough money, I'll buy a suit at Jacques Penet. And I started kind of checking around. You know, where is that? Where is that? And, and someone started laughing when I was asking him. I said, it's not really Jacques Penet. It's J.C. Penny. Well, whatever kind of style you're wearing, it's temporary. It's not going to last forever. We need to wear praise and honor and purity and goodness. Those won't wear out. You'll not outgrow them. Cannot be destroyed by insects. Will not be stolen. Now, might get stained. Your coat of purity could get stained in this world. That's for sure. But repentance and forgiveness, that's the best dry cleaner. It'll, you'll, you'll be like, like new again. There's a permanence. There's a security of the treasure in heaven. That's people and God's word. Verse 34 says, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. So what do you value? What are your priorities? Your heart and your treasure go together. Make sure the things of God, people, and his word, those are the only two eternal things here in this world, but this isn't the only world because we also have heaven and God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So your relationship with Jesus Christ, that is also something that needs to be invested in, something that is permanent. And make sure that is what you value most. People, God's Word, and your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you do not yet have a relationship with Jesus, please, please, Contact us through our, our website, uh, centralalameda.org, and click on the Connect button and fill out a little confidential uh, uh, message to us. And then uh, privately, I can communicate with you and help you in uh, starting that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I understand that people uh, all over the nation during this COVID-19 pandemic, people have come to Christ as Lord and Savior because they heard the message about Jesus on YouTube, Facebook, a church website, and they responded. They said, I, I want that kind of life, that life of Jesus, the one that's going to last forever. I encourage you to do that. Uh, contact us, and I'd love to make contact with you. May God bless you. Uh, trust in him, invest in heavenly treasures. No matter how old we are, we always remember what our dads say and do. My dad is more like Jesus than your dad. No, -uh. my dad doesn't let anybody eat any food until we pray for it. My dad prays for one minute every day. You know what? Our church has pancakes. This is what my sister and mom use for their blush. My dad says that mean kids never know what they're talking about. Because their parents don't know what they're talking about either. My dad says to punch meanies in the face. Then my mom says, don't ever do that. And my dad goes to time out. <laughs> my dad's beard is itchy whenever he kisses me. My dad takes me to church so we could learn to be just like Jesus. My daddy prays for me. 
Then he makes me stop talking and go to bed. Then I get a flashlight and read my po comic book. That's a sin. He's sinning. No, I'm not. Sinner. No, I'm not. R2. 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 My dad said that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. My dad never stays mad at me. My dad taught me to forgive, because Jesus forgives us every time we ask. I want a mohawk. I wish I had hair. It's OK. Your hair will probably grow back. Thanks for being our dads for all our lives.